I was like, why is my hair thick? You know, why can't it be um, thin and, you know, silky like the we other girls' that hairs? White people did not see you want to us that being capable you are black of anything. Don't, they don't want you to be there was black. Never a thing. It's like, like oh, making a statement my hair to say, like I, I stand by my rights and. You know, it's no, like you want identity. to be a white person in a black It's the cultural crossover that we... As I'm older, I'm still I realize I'm so, so grateful right for my thick hair. You know, and I wouldn't change anything about it. I grew up in Pretoria. Uh, grew up in Pretoria, but in a homeland called Puputazwana. And obviously, the homelands were created by apartheid, you know, where black people were put together at, at some place. But but because we were in, in this one homeland for Tswana speaking people, we used to look at South Africa as another country. So we were in a totally, totally different country. We used to have passports for us to go into South Africa. And be, because where we were, the president had put things in such a way that we, we, we felt South Africa was not where we belong. You know that this is your place. Simple things like toilets, you can't just go to any toilet. You know that yours is the side and the whites are the side. The stairs, you know, everything was clearly demarcated. Mary's indoctrination, it was part of it. It was like your second nature, you didn't even question it. I think you only question it as you grow up and say, but why is it different? But at a young age, you see it and you just run because I think that time you don't see color. But the more you get older, you start questioning, but why am I this way and they that way? So yes, you start questioning, but long, not, not whilst you're still young. My hair kind of does to a certain extent define who I am, but it doesn't, it's not a reflection of my personality or myself, my character. When I was younger, um, I had difficulty a little bit because when I was in school, um, I had thick hair, you know, from my mom. It was very thick and it grew and it was just a lot of volume. And my friends had thin hair, you know. So I thought, oh, if I, maybe if I relax my hair, it will be thin like the other girls' hair. And I remember this one time I went to the salon and I was really frustrated. I was like, why is my hair thick? You know, why can't it be um, thin and, you know, silky like the other girls' hairs? I don't want to say like no because I think like for the mere fact that I do my hair to look good I think it is like a semi maybe even like a subliminal political thing but I think it's just like a thing so like I don't I mean not so much with my braids but like with weaves and stuff mm. like I was queen weave mm. and that's like Oh, I don't even, like, this is your shame. This is even, like, painful to say for myself, and it's a realization, realization I've just had now. But during most of my weave days was when I chilled a lot with white people as well. So, no, I didn't, I, I must admit, I didn't really, we didn't really have that as much as we were the first group to go to white schools. I, there was never a thing like, oh, I wish my hair could be like that. Do you know what I mean? So, I think I, I, I can kind of am aware of it politically. I mean, I say in Cape Town, it's quite a white, it's, it's known as like the Europe of Africa. Like it's very like white, even at school sometimes. My friends, my white friends would be like, oh, you look like me, you know, like with the weave or sort of, yeah, I kind of, I'm aware that it's a little bit more than just the physical, physical um, meaning. It's a bit of a metaphor and a bit of a deeper meaning of what you are and like your culture as well. So yeah, I definitely would say it's a bit of a political association. I think, what do you think? I think like for me, my hair like represents a lot of like my blackness. Just because it's very, 
unique and it's the one thing that like like why people don't quite understand so i can i think i feel nearly at my most like black when i'm explaining how black hair works to a white person or when i'm doing my hair and stuff i was very nervous to um, have my weave. Mm. It's my first time ever having weave. I've never done mm. it before. I'm usually a braids person. So for me, it was quite a big decision. Like, okay, what does that mean? Obviously, you have associations like weave. You're trying to look a specific way or, you know, like, so for me, um, my hair kind of does to a certain extent define who I am, but it doesn't, it's not a reflection of my personality or myself, my character. But I think for us older generation, I mean, once we put this, it's like, Back to what we said earlier it's like you don't want to accept who you are you you want to mimic you know it's like you want to be a white person in a black skin so personally i don't like them no i don't feel strongly about oh you're trying to be a white person so you've got long hair for me it's just always been about what a person is comfortable with and how they want to look so no i've never it's never been a political thing for me What's interesting, though, is that, for example, if um, a white lady my mom's age saw me with this hair, she'd be like, oh, you look very simple and elegant. And if I came with sort of an Afro dreadlocks, I'd be like, OK, you seem a bit, mm. you know, uh, radical and sort of, you know, not mm. violent, but like, whoa, you know. So I think yeah. different people have different. Ah, they think you're cultured, you know, you're so well brought up. Once you come like yeah. this. Yeah. Hmm. She's well mannered. They'll have all this nice words just because you just like them. But you Definitely. come like this, it's like, oh, your friend. Okay. And I even saw that at school as well with the teachers and stuff. Another girl had dreadlocks and she was asked to take them out and have braids instead. And I was just like, I just couldn't understand why it was a problem to. The stigma. Yeah. Especially that's... older generation. <laughs> Oof. When I decided to do dreadlocks, amazing for me is, you know, both black and white men look at you differently. One man told me, we were going into a round table conference, you know, some negotiation. He told me, he said, when he saw me going out of my car, he looked at my hair and, and he knew that I was a stubborn woman. School would tell us that your hair needs to be neat, you need to look presentable, blah, blah, blah. And we would then perceive that neat as being straightened or in a pony or in a bun or braided, but looking like perfect or the way school wanted us to look. You do a lot of presentations to um, clients to pitch sort of ideas and strategies. So every time my lectures always say, please make sure your hair looks fine. Like, don't come in, you know, afros. Just tie, if you have an afro, tie your hair back. Or if you have, you know, dreadlocks, make, just look neat, look ladylike. And I always ask, what, what do you mean ladylike? How does that mean? Surely my presentation and my delivery has nothing to do with my hair. I mean, I'm still going to say the same thing the same way to the same people. So why does that influence you? It's the cultural crossover that we have still not been able to get right in South Africa especially. I can't speak for other countries because I've only been in South Africa. For me, it's elegant and it gives me that confidence, you know. Once, once I do my hair and I'm like this, I feel like I'm in charge. So for me, it's elegant, like Mahadi is saying, my view. Their views, it's different. But in my world, that's beauty. I just say beauty. Hair was always, yeah, something that I was very proud of, you know, even, <laughs> even if other things did not go right, whether weight <laughs> or... <laughs> but I knew with the hair, I had the best hair, so I've always loved my hair. <laughs> Sometimes, yes, politically, it's like making a statement to say, I, I stand by my rights and, you know, my identity. The country is not yet there. It's a process. We, we, we still a long way to go. It's 20 years, but let me tell you, so they still have a long way to go. Can you guys list some words describing how people would describe your hair? Short. Long. Okay. <laughs> um, thin. 
rich. Oh, wow. We're just going in opposite directions here. <laughs> um, you do what now? Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, ADK. I don't even know.